walking. I'm not walking at the moment, obviously. <laughs> um, I've got my walk done, so Steph should be happy with me. And um, and please feel free to join in on the step uh, step challenges. I've set up. Oh, what was it called? I set up a program in. There's another app. So if you don't have a Fitbit but you've got something else, you can get Stride Kick. So have a look on my walls on Facebook if you want to join in a step challenge. If you're walking heaps, you might as well join in so that you can get some <laughs> get some broader applause and appreciation for your efforts. <laughs> That's how I see it. Um, so I just saw that Kate Grenville is launching a new book um, and it's called A Room Made of Leaves. There was a huge... Um, I remember at the Australian History Association conference in Tasmania back in 2011, we were talking about the Secret River and historians' reactions to that. It would be really interesting, I would find it really interesting if there were a bunch of us who were interested in reading it and then having a discussion. Um, we can provide our own cheese and wine and <laughs> do like a, an old school um reading group. I used to love doing that with the Professional Historians Association. So I might tag Fiona and Lucy and um, a bunch of other friends from there um, and see if they want to join in. But if you're interested as well um, on reading this book, the new Kate Grenville book, and, um, and having a chat about how colonial Australia is represented and all of that sort of thing, then um, I'm happy to line that up. So just um, flag your interest in the comments or in a DM to me. Um, that would be awesome. I am getting ready to teach again tomorrow. Um, is there anyone who's studying at the moment? Let me know if you're back into study mode or teaching mode and um, how you're finding that for the semester. Ooh, I got a message. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and there was something else I was going to say too. Oh yeah, activism. So I was listening to a presentation last week and it just struck me that there's some people who are only realising that diversity is somehow important now. <laughs> um, better late than never, I guess. But I feel like maybe this should have been something that's come up earlier for people. But anyway, I would be interested to see and talk about that as well. Um, I'm just going to keep posting stuff into the groups and onto my walls about diversity in teaching and diversity in higher ed and all of that sort of thing. And, um, and different perspectives in history because that's how I feel I can contribute to that discussion and and see how we go from there. The other thing is I have um, nearly finished the website with Simba for History's Way. Simba is an awesome designer who's been helping me out with this. Um, really talented and we're about to do a Zoom or a WhatsApp meeting um, for the first time because he's over in Zimbabwe. So I can't wait for that. And, um, and I can't wait to show you all the website because it just looks amazing. And that will be the platform where everyone can meet up um, and get some more content like what I was just talking about, all that diverse perspective stuff <laughs> um, and, and get support. If you're into history and you want support in learning about it or writing about it, publishing and, and pursuing a career as a historian, then that will be a great place to go and, and find some help. Um, and as an international community, because I know there's lots of local groups which are wonderful, like the PHA, which I just mentioned, and the Australian History Association, but um, there's some great opportunities, I think, for some international connections and strengthening those through this online environment that we're finding ourselves in increasingly. Um, and we can make it really human too, not um, not so disconnected. So that's my plan. And um, yeah, but I've just made a cup of tea. So I'm going to drink that. What else am I going to do? I've got some writing. I'm trying to write a new preface for 
the book that's coming out next month, my one on um, the Freedom Rides. So that will be a bit of commentary on what's happened between 2006 when I wrote it originally and now and, and changes that I've noticed and changes that have happened for me and my view on it all. So um, it's kind of cathartic getting that down, uh, though it's taken me a long time to kind of figure out how to, um, how much to put in there. But I think I've just kind of got the balance right. I'll keep playing with it. Um, does anyone else have that? Where, or are you more? Um, sometimes I'm really wondering how much I go with the personal stuff or just keep it purely professional and kind of more objective and distant from me. Um, but I think having done all the work, um, reading standpoint theory and that sort of thing, you've got to be a bit more explicit about where you are coming from. So that's um, that's been my approach in the last little while. For a while, actually, for a long while. But um, yeah. Anyway, ramblings from me. I uh, hope you all have a good day. It was really foggy here this morning. And can I just add... <laughs> Um, the boys are still in childcare, which is great. And I was looking through one of the old videos I did from the start of lockdown where I was talking about childcare centres being <laughs> cesspits for germs. The staff at childcare have been amazing. They're so thorough with their cleaning and it's just so different from um, from when I started taking Eamon to childcare and he would come home with germs <laughs> every couple of days, a new fresh cold. Um, it's really, it's been amazing. So, um, it's, it's a changing, it's, it's amazing how everyone's adapting to this situation. And, um, yeah, so anyway, what I was going to say is that the boys are still there, so they're not climbing all over me, but for an update, um, Tintin's starting to talk, he can say Bumblebee and Eamon and I are teaching him all the names of the Paw Patrol characters and this morning it was really foggy here. This is for the parents who have watched endless <laughs> endless seasons of Paw Patrol. Um, it was foggy so I said oh maybe we're in foggy bottom and um, and Mayor Humdinger might be might be around somewhere and Eamon's like I can't see him and I said, well, maybe he's still in bed. And he's like, let's go find him. And I thought, I've got myself into bigger trouble <laughs> than what I thought. Um, anyway, so they're very cute um, and they're doing well. So um, thanks to everyone who asks after them all the time. All right. Um, have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Um, wear your masks. And um, if you're not following the Survive and Thrive Facebook group, you should get on there because... I am finding some good memes, if I may say so myself, <laughs> and sharing them, and I hope that they're giving you a laugh. All right, catch you later.